to show you the uh, crossover mounts. We're going to be assembling these really quick like. Um, all right, where do I start? All right, first off, if you're going to be running new speaker wire, you probably don't want to get these because you're going to, uh, if you're going to run new speaker wire, then if you look at our installation videos, we'll sh uh, we usually mount the crossovers under the center console in the Toyota Tundra. So the, these are used primarily with our plug and play system. That's where we're getting the, we're going to be using the stock speaker wiring. So this gives us a location or a place or um, a way to hang these crossovers up and out of the way. Alright, so a couple other quick notes. We've already pre-drilled these, so when we send these to you, they're already fitted for these particular speakers. These are the ID65 CS's. They were formerly known as a CTX65 CS. They're basically the same speaker. They've been upgraded a little bit, and then um, they changed the name. So anyhow, it still works with the CTX65 CS or the ID65. If you're using your own mount, we'll mount the dimensions on the web, or I'm sorry, we'll post the dimensions on the website, and you can potentially use your own crossovers here. But keep in mind, you have to worry about the thickness and then the height because this is going to fit behind the door panel. And of course, we're going to switch to the truck in just a second. All right, so assembly is pretty easy. Um, oops, hit the camera. We include four bolts. This one's already been assembled here. We took the two screws, we fed it from the bottom, and then we put the, bol oh, put the bolts on top, or, I'm sorry, the nuts on top, and then tighten it up. Not too tight, you don't want to crack the plastic. So, just a quick rundown. Take this, uh, and we want to usually put the um, terminals facing outward or away from the from the mount. Okay, then this one. And notice it's going to be kind of a tight fit. We did this on purpose. This one's really tight. And then you're going to take your Phillips and kind of force it in there just a little bit. Won't take much pressure. There we go. So next thing we'll do is put the nuts on, tighten it up. So flip that over, tighten that up, do the other one. Now the other thing you can do is here, before you install this, I think you can see that you can set the um, volume of your tweeter here. You can set if you like your tweeters really bright or not as bright. Generally, I like to set them to the negative 3 dB when you're using our plug and play system. So what I'll do is I'll take these and I'll move them to negative 3 dB and again on both of them. Now some of you guys might like your highs really really bright. Uh, you can play with these. Leave them off or um, I'm sorry, leave them on the plus 3 dB. Listen to the stereo and see if you like it. If it's too bright for you, I like to turn them down just a little bit. Everybody has their different preference. Alright, so now I'm going to put my covers back on. Alright, and now uh, we're going to move the camera and then I'm going to show you how to get these installed in the truck. Alright guys, uh, so here we're getting ready to install the crossover mount, so we'll go ahead and do that first. Uh, here you can see Daniel's going to go ahead and install that. Uh, you're going to take the... Um, take off the... Alright. That's actually the door pull. So what he's going to do now is he's going to take that, take the screws, and he's basically just going to put them right back into place. Make sure you don't over tighten them, just kind of get rid of the plastic. Alright, so the crossover is mounted. Now the next thing we're going to do is using our plug and play harness, the same one we used in the tuning part of the video. I don't know if you saw, if you saw that one. But there's this is, this is where this harness comes in really handy. He's going to plug that into the stock wiring that was originally plugged into the old speaker. Then what he's going to do is he's basically going to follow the stock wiring. We're going to zip tie it, and then the positive and the negative, and then we'll show you the crossover. Let me go grab a crossover. All right, so right. your crossover is going to have an in. Let's see if you can see that. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. All right, so your crossover is going to have three different uh, connections. The first one is the in. That's actually going to come from the uh, wire harness that we're, we're setting up now then W goes to your mid-range woofer and then T goes to the tweeter so basically we're going to take the red plug it into the positive here the negative that'll that's going to feed the signal into the crossover then the crossover is going to be responsible for feeding the proper frequency to the mid-range woofer and to the tweeter alright so what Daniel's done so far is he's plugged in the plug-and-play harness 
He cut a little bit of the length off. We don't need all the length. And then he stripped some of the wire away. Then now he's going to go ahead and connect it to the uh, crossover. Also included in our kit is some 18 gauge wire and some 16 gauge wire. The 18 gauge is thinner and that's actually going to run from the crossover to your uh, new tweeter. That's actually the speaker wire that's going to the mid-range driver. So notice he's going through that grommet that's already there. He's just sort of feeding it through there. And again, we're, uh, we'll come back and show you how we zip tile this into place. Notice, as you can see how he ran the wire through that boot. And he's going to just basically pop the boot back in place. And then he's going to give himself a little bit of slack. And he's going to follow the stock wiring. We're going to zip tile this out of the way. The next wire he's going to run is, this is the 18 gauge, this is the thinner wire, this is running up to our tweeter. So just tug on the wires, make sure they're all in there nice and tight, they're not going anywhere. Obviously the crossover is mounted nice out of the way. Um, so the next step, uh, Dan, what Dan is going to do is he's going to uh, get the wires in place, we're going to zip tie them. Uh, we do include some zip ties with the kit. Notice he's back feeding a little bit of wire, make sure he's got enough. It's usually best whenever you're running wire to try and follow the current or the stock wiring location. That way you know that the, the manufacturer has made room for that under the door panels. So generally it's better to try, always try to follow the, uh, the stock wiring locations or the trails or the path, I guess you want to call it. Now the next thing he's going to do is we're gonna, he's gonna follow the same path for the for that wire running in the door, uh, and he's gonna zip tie that wire out of the way to ensure that it doesn't uh, interfere or get in the way of the window. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do here is he's gonna attach the uh, speaker terminals that came with the ID kit. So you will need to crimp these on. All right, so what he's doing now with the, the wire that he's working on now is running up to the tweeter. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a couple a butt connector. And we're actually going to splice these two wires together. Now, we're going to leave a little bit of extra length. And what this does is it gives you some room to play with. So if, when you're going to put the door panel on, you put the door panel and you can leave the tweeter and the, the, uh, the sail panel and the tweeter up and out of the way. All right, so he's going to take the, uh, we'll do the negative side first. And everyone always seems to have this question is, when they look at the tweeter, which one is the positive, which one is the negative? The tweeter on this particular set, the gold color is your positive, the silver color is your negative. So here we've got the red and the black, obviously the red is our positive. So he's going to take the gold wire and connect it to the red. And here you can see the gold and the, sil the, gold and the silver wire. So the gold wire he's going to connect to the positive and the, the, gray, the silver he's going to connect to the negative. Now, we probably won't do a video on this, but if you decide you just want to use coax speakers, those are the speakers without tweeters, uh, basically all you're going to do is use the same exact setup, but instead of plugging the, um, the speaker harness into the, um, into the crossover, you'll basically just plug it straight into your new speaker. So you have a choice. You can either use components or not use components. And obviously we're showing you guys how to set up components. Um, another option we'll probably offer because we've had customers ask us this sail panel if you'll hold that up for them Daniel okay what Daniel did is he actually took a Dremel and he um, cut out the hole for the uh, for the tweeter and it sits in there really nice and tight it takes you have to be really patient and you have to make the hole just a hair smaller than the tweeter and it'll sit in there nice and tight now you can do this yourself with a Dremel it's really easy you just got to take your time and be patient if you'd like, we offer these uh, pre-assembled for you on the website. So your choice. And again, don't be afraid to um, don't be afraid to really mess those up. I think they're like you can get them online for about twenty twenty five dollars. So even if you mess one up, you can always order one and and, uh, and finish the job. So I mean, don't stress over messing up the uh, a little a part that's easily accessible. So up there you can see Daniel's got got it installed and generally we don't install that until after the door has been put on because the door has to go on first but we wanted to show you what it's going to look like 
Alright, so next thing he's going to do is plug in the uh, mid-range driver. Alright, so here you can see Daniel's getting ready to assemble. He's attaching the, uh, the uh, mid-range driver to, the heavy duty, to our heavy-duty uh, speaker adapter. And you can see the, the, the speaker adapters are solid one-inch plastic. They're very heavy-duty. And we highly, strongly recommend that you guys pre-drill this. A lot of guys uh, are going to try and take their impact and, and drive straight into the plastic. And the chances of you screwing up your speaker is, is pretty high. So what Daniel's going to do is he's taking a, uh, a drill with a small bit, just a little pilot hole. He's going to pre-drill them all. And then we'll go ahead and use our impact and drive those screws in. You don't want to go all the way through the plastic, obviously. You only want to go in maybe three quarters of an inch. All right. Now the next thing he's going to do is, if you uh, when you purchase this kit, we also include the mounting screws and the longer bolts you're going to need. Now the really cool thing about this whole setup is you're actually using a true set of component speakers here, so you're going to get a really you're going to get really nice sound quality. You're actually the you're installing a full um, a true crossover. These speakers will handle over 100 watts RMS easily. The plug and play amps are going to put out about 70 watts RMS RMS to each speaker. So you're basically getting a high end setup at a really you know at a really entry level price. Alright, just to give you guys an idea, um, these are two different speaker manufacturers. I won't show you who the one on the right is, but they claim that that speaker handles about 100 watts RMS. And it probably can. Um, now, if you look at the speaker on the left, that's the image dynamics. Notice the size. You've got a much bigger basket. You've got a lot more, um, you've got a lot more uh, cone area. So this driver is going to provide a lot more mid-bass. It's also going to be a lot, I mean, it's just a really neat speaker for the money. So a lot of times I get people saying, why are the image dynamics so good? Well, if you just look at the sheer size and volume of the basket, the magnet, there, um, the, the, um, anytime you have a woofer, just, um, how do I say this? Even like a subwoofer in your vehicle, the magnet is responsible, the magnet and the spider are responsible for keeping the, the uh, woofer in check per se. So these can handle a lot more, a lot more power and they're gonna provide cleaner power than a lot of other speakers. So if, again, if you look to the speaker on the right, that one claims to handle 100 watts RMS. The one on the left is the Image Dynamics, and you can see there's a huge difference in the two uh, products. So next time you're doing product comparison, um, you know, take, take, uh, be sure to take a good look. All right, so Daniel's getting ready to install this. He's got it mounted to the, uh, he's got the speaker mounted to the, um, attached to the mount. All right, so it's ready to be installed. He's going to take the longer bolts that came with your kit. Those are 10 millimeter bolts. And then he's going to attach them to the truck. All right, so what we highly recommend is that you use a wrench at this point. Don't use the impact. What you're going to do is you're going to turn the screws. You're going to, you're going to go each side. The nuts on the back are plastic, so you don't want to over tighten this. So what you're going to do is you're going to tighten it until it bottoms out and then give it about a quarter turn. And then you're going to go around again, in, in a sort of like, kind of like you're doing a tire, a little bit at a time, get it nice and tight, and then you know you're good to go. Yeah, the speaker's mounted, the crossover's in place, the tweeter's in place, let's look up there, see the tweeter. Alright, the last thing we're going to do is cut our zip ties, uh, get it nice and clean. And then we'll reassemble the door and you're pretty much done. Again, if you're using our plug and play amp system, you're now going to be getting, um, this saves you a bunch of time over running speaker wire. If you're going with our higher end system, uh, you're probably not going to want to mount the crossovers in the door. You'll probably mount them in the center console because you'll be running new speaker wire. So if you're running new speaker wire, per our videos, you're going to run a, a tweeter wire and a speaker wire directly from the crossovers that are going to be hidden, excuse me, inside the truck. All right, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to jump to the back door now, and we're going to take care of the, uh, show you how to install those speakers as well.